Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, and we are here with another Wildcat commitment. The roster is getting close, Drew. It is getting dangerously close to being completed, having every scholarship used up. There are a lot of people out there that didn't probably think it was possible. One of them, probably me, at various points. And I certainly didn't think that if K-State was still adding players uh, into June, that you would be getting ones that, to me, come across as guys that will actually give you minutes this upcoming season. And there's no doubt in my mind that Yugana Onyenso is going to give K-State minutes this upcoming season. Spent his first two years at Kentucky as a four-star portal guy. Not the biggest score, but in terms of what he did, less than 19 minutes a game, got in there, grabbed about five boards, was a rim protector in just those 19 minutes. He played in 24 games this season, uh, started a little over half of those uh, with, with what he was able to do, I believe. So this is a fascinating ad for K-State. It's a big, which we know that they needed. On Yinso stands at seven feet tall. Uh, so that is notable in terms of what is kind of going to go on here. And now we see how K-State has built this roster where they have three really good bigs that you trust to be on the floor. And each of them has a different skill set where Achor has the scoring ability. Gasson is going to come in and really David Gasson's like a Swiss army knife. He's going to kind of do whatever you need him to do in his role. Nothing is going to overwhelm you, but he's going to be a really solid player that you can trust. And now Anyinsu comes in and he's going to be the guy that grabs boards and protects the rim for you. And I think K-State should be really excited about this kid. Yeah, this is a fun get for me. Like, uh, he can do a little bit of everything on the defensive end, not the most polished offensively. I think it was last week where I kind of called him, like, the diet version of Clifford Amore. Like, they kind of have very similar skill sets in terms of what they bring, and especially on the on the defensive end where they were both really good rim protectors. Not the most skilled offensively, but I think that that's okay because I think that with how K-State runs their offense, it's a lot easier for bigs to get open looks and get open near the basket. Probably easier than Kentucky even. Like I I have some real doubts about John Calipari going forward and how he kind of has been able to coach and move guys along. It just seems like he was very guard oriented and that the guards kind of didn't really have like a set offense. It was just, we are a five star coming out of high school. Like we are probably better than the guy that's across from us. So Onyenso didn't really get a real chance to be able to really have an offensive game at Kentucky. Uh, but he can do everything that you need him to do on the defensive end. And he's probably the perfect big for not just this season, but just for what Casey is looking for. A good run protector can rebound, can run the floor. And you said he only played 24 games last season. Uh, he played 24 games and was third in the SEC in blocks. And if he would have played more games, he would have been number one on average and number one in total. But he had 66 or 64 blocks this past season. Like he is a menace. <laughs> when you bring something into the lane, you can't come soft because Onyenso will send it back. Yeah, and if if people are wondering, well, he only played 24, like which games did he miss? He missed the insignificant games for for Kentucky. So like when he got going this year to ramp up, it was it was just into the fire because his first game was against North Carolina. So the only game that Onyenso played this season against a non-major competitor would be his second game of the year or his third game of the year against Illinois State and then the NCAA tournament game against Oakland because every other game was against either an SEC opponent, Louisville, North Carolina, and Gonzaga. So he played against good competition this year, obviously. It's the stats in the less than 20 minutes a game, those come across against good opponents. So I, I just I throw that out there because some people might notice 24 games like, oh, what did he miss? And did he only pad stats against, you know, Northern Kentucky or something? No, he, he was out there doing it uh, against good competition. And now, like you said, there wasn't really a need for him to be an offensive weapon at Kentucky. He comes to K-State. That role will be a little bit more open for him, you know, but I don't think that's the the expectation when you bring this type of player in. It's, hey, we, we have a pretty full roster. We needed another big, and 
we have a lot of guys that we know can shoot the ball. You and I have talked about that a lot on all these commit videos this year. And we just need guys that can step up, play defense, and give some minutes and breathers to David Gasson or Achora Achora. And I think that we see that now with Onyenso. One other thing I want to point out here is, so played two seasons at Kentucky. And that first season that he was there, he was still supposed to be a senior in high school. So he is a young junior that K-State is going to have. So, yes, he's played two years. That helps developmentally. But, like, the jumps that he is making, I think, are still significant. And we see that in what happened last year. He only played 16 games last year, less than seven minutes a game. And the numbers in that one, honestly, you know, fairly comparable in terms of what he did uh, on a, you know, points per minute or blocks per minute type of thing. But I think that there's, you know, a lot of growth going on there. And uh, just something worth noting that his age, he he showed up to Kentucky and was still, uh, you know, age-wise supposed to be a senior in high school. So there's a lot of good in this ad for K-State. And uh, I think it starts to round out the roster quite a bit better and can kind of set the foundation for what you think that last scholarship needs to be used on. Yeah, he's really still just scratching the surface because he is only 19 years old uh, and about to be a junior in college. So he's on the younger side. The one thing that I'll say is like he only played 18 minutes a game. If you want to see like the full, like what does it look like if he's playing 30 or 35 minutes a game? I think that the, the ceiling is sky high if you look at where his Florida game this year at home on January 31st, which is only like his 10th game of the season, uh, where he had 13.16 rebounds and eight blocks. I mean, that, that's a tremendous, tremendous stat line, especially when you add in nine of the 16 rebounds that he had were offensive. So he can really do a little bit of everything as a big and I mean, if you really kind of look at where his career trajectory is going, you kind of expect him to take another jump and be like a six, seven points a game player with probably eight, nine rebounds and still that two or three blocks a game. The the thing that I think will be key is that you need to have him available for every game because he obviously wasn't available for every game this year and hasn't played a, and didn't play a full season as a freshman. So if he can play a full season, I think that the ceiling is high. I mean, he was on some NBA draft boards and then elected to come back to school. And I think that the reason that he's coming back to school is because he probably needs to polish more of his offensive game. But the defense is tremendous. Yeah, I don't want to alarm K-State fans out there, but he did have foot surgery prior to last season. So that's what kept him out until their uh, mid-December game against North Carolina. So PTSD, check the floor at uh, the ice center and make sure that uh, the the foot problems aren't going to come back to K-State basketball that they always seem to have uh, under Bruce Weber. But this, this really is a good get, and we can we can look in how this fits with the rest of the roster. I think we talked about last week or a couple of weeks ago kind of the fit and what our expectation was in terms of how you allocate minutes on this team. To me, I, I think obviously a, a tour tour is a guy that we discussed the style of play that he played at Samford. It'll be a lot different at K-State. It, it won't be as fast. Um, so maybe you can squeeze a little bit more minutes out of him. But Onyenso is a guy that probably is going to play at least 20 minutes a game considering the fact that he played almost 19 last year at Kentucky, he could be closer to 2025. And then the rest of the roster, like you've built this now to where he or Gasson is on the floor. They don't have to worry about being offensive threats. And how many times last year did we see the ball kind of get sticky or just the, the flow gets disrupted when Gasson was out there because he can't do certain things. He, he couldn't defer last year either because you just didn't have that talent. This year now, we've been over it, but you can defer to Doug McDaniel. He can shoot. C.J. Jones, he can shoot. Brendan Hawson, he can shoot. Uh, Same type of thing you would assume for Max Jones, how that'll translate. And we're banking on David Castillo probably being able to shoot it a little bit in the minutes that he gets for K-State this coming year. So to me, this this is working out pretty well, and this is how you want to build a roster. And now the only thing that could get even better for you if you're K State is use that last scholarship to kind of uh, really up your your profile in terms of getting a, another impact player, which we know that there are still two out there. 
uh, that K-State are, is really high on in Jameer Watkins and Coleman Hawkins. It might make it tough to, to land those guys, but those would probably be you know, over-the-moon additions if you could get them to go with everything you've already done. Yeah, I think that what we're really seeing is that Doug McDaniel will be the straw that kind of stirs the drink for K-State, but we've seen how they've kind of gone about Doug McDaniel being the first commit of the transfer class and how they want to build around him. And it just seems like they've built this roster around him where everybody can shoot. And even though McDaniel's on the smaller side and wasn't a great defender at Michigan, that they're building all this length and all these good defenders around him to be able to surround him and just make it a, a better team defense. And defense was really good for Casey last year. I anticipate it being even better this year with all this length and all this size and all these kind of fun pieces to play with. And, and I, I still think that there are people sleeping a little bit on K-State's roster, not just from a national standpoint, but, but even from the fan perspective. I, I mean, I saw a couple people on the boards today saying that this doesn't really move the needle like a ton with K-State in terms of tournament chances. I thought that they were a tournament team before. And I, and I think that this kind of just bolsters that and adds another weapon to K-State's disposal. Because right now you're probably sitting at seven guys, maybe eight that you think that you're comfortable with playing. And I think that you feel comfortable and you feel like the fit more of this roster way more than you did last year. And last year's team almost made the tournament. So I, yeah. I think that there's a lot of sleeping going on about this roster. And and that to me is what I was I was gonna follow up on that that you bring it up because I agree that if you look at this roster and you take even Onyenso off of it, I still think that's a team that can make the NCAA tournament. Why is that? It's because last year I saw the team that Jerome Tang and his staff had, and I like them far less than what I see right here because the better the best player on this team is better than the best player on last year's team. There's more shooting. The pieces fit better. And now you got another really nice piece that, hey, the edges fit. Like, you get it in there. like. I think the best way to, you know, kind of make an analogy for how basketball rosters should work in this day and age, like you're building one giant puzzle and the pieces have to fit together. If not, you're not going to complete it. And completion for, depending on who you are and what the, the goals are, it can look different. So completion for K-State last year probably would have been making the tournament, but the pieces, they just didn't fit. This team, I feel like you already have the pieces completed to be an NCAA tournament team. It's like, you know, as a, Every every single uh, rectangle is a square, or a square is a rectangle, whatever the thing is. But like, not every you know the other side. I think that's kind of what we're seeing here. Where K State, the the first puzzle, it's complete. Like you you've done that, but now you're trying to get it to where the pieces also say, hey, you're not just a tournament team, but you're a second weekend team. And K State's getting there. And Onion, so you don't need to keep adding guys that can score. You have enough guys that I trust that can put the ball in the hole. You needed another guy that could play that four or five spot and also kind of be able to come in and help you with your defense, which like you said, was fantastic last year already. And now you have more guys that profile as being able to kind of protect the inside more so than what K-State had last year, because we know so many times they had to interchange uh, Will McNair and Jarrell Colbert to try and get offense or defense. I think now you kind of trust that number one, you won't be that desperate for offense, but number two, Onyenso and Gasson, if they're out there on the floor together, you have two capable defenders. Yeah, and I, I hate bringing this up because I know that it's kind of a, a touchy subject between the two of us and with the fan base. But, I mean, I think that this team right now on paper is probably more talented on paper than what Iowa State probably had last year coming into the season. And you saw that fit mattered at Iowa State. Well, now you probably have a better talent at on this K-State roster, and the fit is a lot better, so you'd anticipate like a similar jump, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, T.J. Otzelberger, the 85-year-old uh, person in the retirement home, just working on puzzles all day, and he's gotten pretty darn good at them, and uh, that's where K-State's trying to catch up to right now. But I, I think this is a really nice ad for K-State. This is not like a game-changer in any way, but this is another one that, 
you see that competent roster construction is going on at K-State right now and that they are accomplishing what they wanted to. I'll throw the roster up one more time because I also want to highlight this, and we've talked about this a lot, and this is where I'll bring Iowa State back into the equation and compare to them. But you can build a roster and keep it sustained using the transfer portal. It doesn't have to just be, hey, you got to be great in high school recruiting to do this. And it takes some time to get there. But what we're seeing now is Jerome Tang has established himself at K-State and they are getting guys in now that it's not just that one-year rental, that you know piece of duct tape that you're slapping over the roster. But of the transfers they brought in, Doug McDaniel has two years to play. C.J. Jones has two years to play. Brendan Hazen has two years to play. Bayfall has three years to play and a red shirt if you want to use it. Uh, David Gasson, he transferred a couple years ago, but he's going on his third year at K-State as a transfer. Max Jones, that's that's your rental right there. A chore, a chore, that's your rental. That's the that's the luxury piece. But then you see Akegaruka and Onyenso both have multiple years of eligibility to be used. That is significant. Yeah, it, it, it really shapes out to where if K-State does what we think they can do this year, and can keep everybody around because I mean that that's just a whole nother a whole nother ball game at this point uh, with basketball. But if they can keep those guys around, I think that it's fair to say that we anticipate the 25, 26 roster to be even better than this. Yeah. It'll be interesting to to see what comes next for K-State, but they only have one last spot to add to. Uh, I think they'll be aggressive, but you can certainly be a little bit more patient now. And uh, you're you're not too worried about what's going on because you do have the pieces at each spot kind of figured out. Because uh, I think the last thing that we talked about that was really a concern was you just don't have enough depth when it comes to your bigs. They seem to have that now with three really capable guys that'll go with the four or the five. We'll see what happens next. And if you want to stay in the know with what is going on with K-State basketball recruiting, head over to kstateonline.com. We'll keep you covered over there. Uh, as well as our national crew, Joe Tipton, Jamie Shaw. Uh, they were dropping nuggets on the onion, so uh, recruitment along the way as well. So that's the place to get it all. We also have plenty of great football content going on right now. Been a busy time for visitors and camps and everything else. So head to KSO, get that checked out, and also be sure to check the KSO YouTube every single day. You can subscribe, get it immediately. Whenever we post a video, anytime there's a commit, you get this or uh, – any other day, you just get whatever comes to our head and a weekly recruiting update from Drew. So that's what's going on with K-State and also K-State Online. We're out of here. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.